Hi, hey, hello, welcome back to another episode of My Life as a Harem Anime, but without the bitches. Alright, so without the comedy out of the way, uh, thank you, uh, fuckton for, uh, 300 subscribers. Please excuse the very cancer audio. As you can see, I'm not in my usual setup area with the couch and everything. I'm actually on my computer because I'm here to talk about basically everything I use, and by everything, I mean everything. For example, this shirt right here is the Astolfo No Homo shirt from SoDarnCuteBrand.com. No, this is not a sponsorship. I just genuinely love Decooters and her content and her... Her music and and uh, I I, I got I got to support and I and I also really fucking love the shirt. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into uh, basically just talking about everything. <laughs> So we're going to start off with the bad boy PC that I have right here. For the processor, I use a Ryzen 7 3700X 8-core. Motherboard is an MSI B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. For the memory, I use a G-Skill F4 DDR4 3600C18 216GB. For storage, I use a WB Black SN751 TB for the main storage. And then I have a WD My Passport 25E1 1TB storage. Uh, external hard drive that I pretty much store everything on. And then graphics card, I use a NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, and I am planning on getting an RTX 380 once prices are reasonable. I also have a laptop, which I pretty much use for a lot of shit, mainly uh, for music making, uh, recording audio for songs and videos, and also recording the video sections of some of my videos. That laptop is just a generic uh, HP 15-inch uh, thing that uh, my parents bought me on my birthday. Its processor is like an AMD quad-core AB7410 APU with 4 gigabytes of RAM and a 15-inch touchscreen with only 500 gigabytes of storage. I would recommend for, uh, just like, in general, like, music making and, um, uh, audio recording and, like, maybe video recording if you're just gonna go for the webcam. I would not recommend for gaming at all. It cannot fucking do that at all. And video editing? I, I guess... I mean, it, it served me well with what I needed it to do, but it, 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 um, it's also kind of a fucking nightmare and a pain in the ass, so I just don't think I would recommend it that much for video editing, but that was 2018 that I had that, so you can probably get a better one. I mean, fucking hell, just go buy, like, a Razer gaming laptop or some shit. Or, you know, just go buy a PC. <laughs> I also use a flying fuck ton of programs, so let's go ahead and get right into that. For recording video, I usually use the old school Logitech video recording software. Uh, I, the new one doesn't run well on my laptop. Or in this case, I'm using OBS Multiplatform, which I usually use to uh, record gameplay on PC or just other random things like Chrome or some shit like that. Recording audio, I use the classic Audacity. Going back to the recording gameplay aspect, uh, if it's PC games, like I said, I use the OBS multi-platform, but for the most part, I use uh, my Xbox One, and I use that recording feature. And for the longest time, I was doing the 10 minutes, but recently I did get a PNY 64GB USB 3.0, which you don't really need specifically that, just basically any 3.0 USB drive. 64GB uh, is like a safe area, I think, and that'll allow you to record for about an hour. It might be different for PS4, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> For script writing, I kind of trade off between Notepad++ and Google Docs, but then I have all my scripts saved onto Google Docs because it's uh, just an easier way to be able to go from the PC to the laptop and record all that shit. When it comes to streaming, I record that using Streamlabs OBS, not the OBS multi-platform. For photo editing and then video editing and video exporting, I, um... I use a program that everyone uses that's not owned by Sony. And then when it comes to music production, I use the opposite of Ableton, and I also use BandLab on Android, uh, just to make quick demos if I ever feel like it, but most of the time I never make a full song. My song Maturity was actually mostly written on BandLab, so that's, that's uh, a neat fact. Also, I'm not going to go through all the VSTs that I use, but the top three that I'll name off is Camel Crusher for compression, because that shit's fucking amazing. Uh, Keyzone Classic for a piano VST, that's pretty good. 
and Vital for a free alternative to Serum. I f I've been fucking loving Vital ever since I, I, I got my hands on it. And then if I ever need to convert videos, which I pretty much always need to, either when it comes to movie footage or um, camera footage, because uh, Logitech for some reason records an inconsistent frame rate for some reason, uh, I use a free program called Handbrake. It's fucking amazing. I love that shit. And uh, even if you don't have to convert a video just for editing, uh, it works really well just when it comes to uploading to YouTube. Sometimes you can only export an AVI, which is a pretty massive fucking file. So you just throw in that AVI file into Handbrake, uh, convert it to an MP4, and then bada bing, bada boom, you have a smaller file. It makes it easier to upload. And like I said, it's free. So, just go fucking get it. It's great. I really hope it never, uh, you know, stops being free. It's, it's, it's fucking amazing. One little small thing, uh, it's pretty basic, uh, for screenshotting stuff. Uh, I use LightShot specifically. You could use, uh, just, like, Windows generic, like, snipping tool or whatever. I guess they, like, replace that, but... I use LightShot just because it's, like, easier to me. Uh, you basically just press print screen, and then you get to crop whatever you want. You get a little bit more um, freedom and mobility when it comes to actually, like, um, figuring out exactly what you want to screenshot. And also, you can upload it all to one site and use that if you ever want to make, like, a Twitter poll or something. I haven't used that feature, but I know um, a past YouTuber I used to watch used it for that, and that's actually where I got LightShot from. So, if you want a good uh, screenshotting thing, then uh, LightShot's pretty fucking dope. To play games, I usually play on Xbox. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'm an Xbox boy. I played the Xbox 360 back in, uh, like, what, fucking... 2007? 2008? Somewhere around there was when I got, uh, the Xbox 360, and I've just stuck with that. Uh, so I use the Xbox One, uh, for gameplay, mainly just for playing games. Or I will use a PC to play PC games occasionally. The platform I use for that is mostly Steam. And finally, some uh, very small shit is uh, desktop programs that I use. Uh, for my wallpapers, I use Wallpaper Engine. Um, pretty basic, it just lets you have animated wallpapers. Um, that's pretty popular, I think everyone uses it uh, if they ever want to have that kind of wallpaper. But some other things that I use is I use Rain Meter just to have like a little customizable thing. Um, I can have, like, a small clock and, like, a recycle bin and, like, see my CPU and, like, my hard drive and shit on there. And then I also used to use Nimi Places, and I would like to use it again, but it's currently broken for me. But that's basically just, uh, on-screen folders that you can have. Uh, it just makes sorting your desktop a hell of a lot easier. Also, the program used. In order to get those wave spectrum things, you know the ones. It's always used on those shitty EDM trap remix channels and they give you epilepsy. Yeah, so anyways, the program we use is called AV Player and you can get it on the Microsoft Play Store for free. It's pretty good except for the fact that it cuts off a few seconds at the end and it's never fucking consistent. But whatever, it's the easiest program to use. <laughs> Alright, let's get into the gear. There's a fuck ton of shit that I use. For keyboard, I use a Razer Black Widow. For a mouse, I use a Corsair Night Sword. For headphones, I use a pair of Sony XB950B1. For speakers, I use the Logitech Z323. I also have a pair of earbuds that I use to uh, test out uh, rough mixes and songs. Those are the Jam Live Fast earbuds. For mics, I have both a Blue Yeti and a Blue Snowball. I mostly record nowadays with a Blue Yeti. That's for like all my videos. I recorded my uh, debut rap EP, Postgraduate, using a Blue Yeti and it sounds fine to me. I'm reliving the past, reliving the past, but I'm fucking it because it ain't what I asked. So, anyone who fucking tells you that you can't record using regular USB mics, they're a fucking liar. Don't take my word for it. Look at uh, Critical and the Gentleman. Uh, 2019 guy's an absolute banger, and that was recorded on a USB mic. My dicks look big, my girlfriend fucks my I mean, hell, one of my greatest rap songs of all time, in my opinion, like, my personal best rap song ever, Wish We Knew, that was recorded on my fucking blue snowball in my mom's closet. Wish you knew how I felt, wish I knew how you felt. As long 
long as you have a microphone, that's fine. You can use your goddamn phone. I know someone who records their raps using an iPhone, and it sounds fine. Don't get it twisted to this rap shit. I'm addicted. Spit the verses at victim. Shots is never missing. Just as long as you know what DAW you're using, and you know your DAW inside and out, and what effects you could possibly use to clean it up. I mean, fuck's sake, City Girl's vocals. Uh, anytime she has vocals on a song is with an iPhone, like... He thinks it's cute that her singing is the worst he's ever heard. You could just use anything you want at this point. It, 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 it's not that hard. I hate this fucking shit of like, oh, you need to have like a, a, a an XLR microphone in order to sound good. Fuck you. You can use a fucking blue snowball if you want. Piss off. Moving on, in order to record guitar and keyboard, I use a Bay Ringer guitar jack to USB. Um... <sighs> I okay look eventually I'll upgrade to a um audio interface probably like a Scarlet or some shit but back then I really wanted to record guitar and I didn't have the money to afford a audio interface so I just got a guitar jack to USB the one I use was like 20 bucks it works fine it does what it needs any guitar part you have ever heard on a song of mine, uh, except for anything off of 17 on 14. What was recorded using that guitar jack to USB. Sounds fine. The only problem I have is it records the very high frequency buzz, but you can just easily EQ that shit out. I would recommend it if you are on a very cheap budget, but if you're not and you have the money to spend, Go get a fucking audio interface. It'll just make your life a lot of, uh, so much easier. Uh, I assume. For monitors, I have a Samsung T27B350 27-inch TV on my uh, desk, along with a 16x9 Acer K202HQL. And then in my room with my laptop, I have a 16x9 Acer S200HQL connected to that. And I also have a second one that I bought way back in the day because that's what I used mostly. Uh, they're fine. They do what they need to do. They're monitors. I mean, I like this. This was originally my TV I used to use back in the day. Um, I actually did get an upgraded TV. Uh, when I stopped using this, it was because I got an upgraded TV that was basically just a hand-me-down from, like, uh, one of my co-workers, or now co-workers. Uh, that's a Vizio 37-inch. Uh, you could probably get something better. Um... I mostly use hand-me-downs. <laughs> For keyboard, I use a Yamaha YPT230. It's pretty fucking old. Uh, you could probably get a better one nowadays. I've had that shit for years. It's It, it does what I need. The MIDI keyboard that I use is an Arturia Microlab. Uh, it's pretty good. For guitars, I own a Jackson J522 7-string and a Fender Squire Mini. And occasionally, I'll use my dad's Yamaha RGZ 320P or the Dean Dimaflage, a uh, Washburn acoustic guitar, or a Fender bass. I don't really use amps that much, but if I ever do, it's either my dad's Marshall 100 HFX amp with a Crate PE 15H cabinet, or my own Marshall MG10 CD amp. And if I ever use the Marshall 100 HFX amp, it's also plugged into a Boss ME80 pedal with effects, but I kind of don't ever really use that anymore. I just record dry sound, and then I have, like, VSTs and shit that I can use. Uh, that, that sound fine enough. As long as you know what you're using, you can make anything sound good. And you may also notice that I usually have decent lighting. Uh, I use a just generic, newer studio light, and, um... Also, just some random fucking light that I got from some random store. I can't even remember the name of. They do fine uh, light bulbs. I don't really know the, the wattage or the usage, but go for uh, something something white uh, to get this color. Uh, I the, When I first got the, uh, the random light thing, before I got the studio light, uh, that light bulb uh, had an orange tint to it, and it looked like fucking dog shit. Don't, don't. Make sure, make sure when you turn on a light bulb, it's white. Doesn't even mention what camera he uses. It's a Logitech C920 HD Pro, by the way. And last but not least, uh, because maybe some of you would like to know, depending on when this video comes out, probably after I've used one of them, uh, I do have some prop guns. Uh, <laughs> because... I'm an American... <laughs> So this one is a P226 model uh, BB gun. 
I, it's fine. I don't really prefer it that much. Uh, the gun I do prefer is whatever the fuck model this is that was owned by a crack addict who stole my dad's co-worker's truck. And when they got the truck back, this was in it. I love this shit so much. It's, it, it's very uh, firm. It's got some weight to it. It actually looks more realistic. I, this was the first one I had. And uh, I just, I love it the most. And then I guess when it comes to setup, um, I have this. This is kind of where I'm usually at. Uh, just random desk that I have destroyed over the years that I got from an old neighbor who managed, who uh, ended up being a cunt. Excuse the very fucking shit video quality. This video has been in the works for so long now, and getting a hold of the Nikon just to film something really quick is just a hassle that neither of us want to deal with. Anyways, this is Alex's new desk and setup. It's got pretty much everything that was mentioned prior, but instead of being on an old beat up wooden desk, it's now on a 63 by 43 backhand desk from Ikea. For only being 360 USD, it's pretty fucking good, and we both highly recommend it, if you're looking for a cheap, but high quality desk. I got a new chair. I used to have this really, um, really old chair that was, uh, broken. Had a broken wheel. Uh, but I recently got this for $5 off of, like, OfferUp. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's a decent chair. Um... Me. And just overall, this is kind of just the, the computer room area of the house. Uh, I just, I randomly move uh, this desk around. Uh, currently, it's here just because I got this bad boy and it's got these nice, good looking lights. And I didn't want that shit glaring out the window uh, and anybody raking into the house and stealing it. <laughs> Also, you can see this is the same place that I record all of uh, Jonas features. Um, because I used to have my desk over in that corner over there. That was fine. Um, but now my desk is in this corner. And I didn't bother wanting to change all this shit. So I've just left it here. And now I sit where Jonas is supposed to be. <laughs> and then in my room, I just have a couch and a TV stand that I use as a coffee table slash half desk. Um, where I just have my mic stand, uh, and, you know, this mic, uh, you know, my laptop and my camera and all that shit. I usually film everything in my bedroom, and then I edit everything in a different room. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I also use my dad's, uh, Nikon, I believe is a Nikon camera. Uh, I'll put the exact one on screen, I don't remember. Uh, I use that for, like, cinematog- like, cinematic shit, so, um, in my year-end lists during the, uh, uh cinematic-esque intro, I use that camera. Uh, I've also used it for the, uh, Batman series trailer, and for, uh, one shot in the Batman Unlimited series, or trilogy- review. I don't know if that's going to be out by the time I get this one out. I'm, maybe. Um, but that one um, has a shot that I use that camera in. Uh, it's a pretty good camera. Uh, only records for about 20 minutes, so I wouldn't fully recommend. Um, but also, I'm pretty sure Nikon or Canon will uh, has some fucking camera you could use. Uh, that's a lot better. But I just use that for like short cinematic stuff because it's uh, very high quality and it's a lot better than recording with the with a webcam. <laughs> and so I think that's basically it when it comes to this section of the video. Now I'm going to move on to the Q&A-esque section where I'll uh, answer some questions that I got off of YouTube and Discord. And I think also Twitter. I'd have to go check that one. Um, uh, this is a sh uh, shameless self-promo. Please join my Discord server. It's fucking dead. Um, and I would like it to be alive, please. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. See you. See you as a 2D character! Hello, let's hope, uh, Audacity doesn't fuck with me this time. Alright, we're gonna get into the questions now. Uh, I'm gonna- I'm gonna go for these two, uh, firstly, just to get them out of the way, because I have to do with, uh, content. I know you're reviewing the newest stuff, but can you review other stuff, too? Uh, this is an- uh, this is alluding to my New Empire Volume 2 review by Hollywood Undead, and probably alluding to talking about Hollywood Undead's older work. So to answer that, I will say that I do have a the discography of Hollywood and Dead video in the works, but 
It's currently in the editing process with all the audio edited. I just need to go through and add visuals. And it's like a 50 minute video. And every time I click on the project to go work on it, I just do not feel like working on it at all. So yeah, the video is in the works. I just don't know when it'll ever come out. What's going to be the next review? Probably, okay, so Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming out uh, next week uh, at the time of me recording this, so that'll probably end up being the next review. Music-wise, NF's got a mixtape coming out, and Calliope has an EP coming out, so those are possibly going to get reviewed. Depends on whether or not I have something to say about either of them. All right, now into genuine questions. What was the hardest song for you to write? Um... I'd probably, okay, so like rap song, I'd probably say Wish We Knew just because that gave, I went through like three drafts of the first verse, or like two drafts of the first verse, three drafts of the second verse, um, because I just really wanted that song not to sound really fucking edgy, and I was trying to make it like the least edgiest possible, and I kept sending drafts over to like Brayden and Cameron for them to like, rate on whether or not, like, how edgy something is. So, that would be, like, rap song. Uh, instrumental song? Um, Bad Decisions was kind of hard. That had, like, six different versions, because I didn't know what, uh, kind of, like, song I wanted to make for that. Konako was also kind of a hard one, just because I, I didn't know what direction I wanted to go for that one, but the second I did find the direction that I wanted, that was incredibly easy to make. Not necessarily the hardest to write, but was a uh, pain in the ass to make it sound good. Uh, we stole a fucking couch, because for the longest time, I could not get that shit to sound, like, energizing as I wanted it to be. Um, turns out, you just gotta up the BPM to, like, fucking 198. <laughs> I think it was originally, like, 140 or something. What was the hardest video for you to make? What are my videos? <laughs> Honestly, the, uh, closest I can think of is probably my discography of Logic Redux video, just because I, and even then that wasn't that really, that wasn't that hard, it was just, I was so unmotivated at the time to actually edit it, and I wanted it to get out, like, really soon after No Pressure was released, that eventually I just got, like, really upset at, like, how unfinished it was, and just blasted through it in, like, one day, and that's why there's some mistakes towards the end in editing, because I just did not give a fucking shit. But overall, I think that one might be, like, the hardest, uh, in quotations. Every video of mine is, uh, pretty, pretty easy for the most part. It's just, just, I don't know, my laziness gets in the way for the most part. That's why it took the Batman series to take so fucking long to get out, because I just kept getting really lazy and unmotivated to, to work on it. There were, act like, genuinely there were times I thought I was burnt out on the project, and it, it, it made me really scared, because I'd spent so fucking long on that series that I didn't want to, I didn't want to just throw it all away. Favorite color slash colors? Well, obviously purple is one of them, because I have it on everything, but black is my favorite color of all time, because I'm an edgelord. And red would be my second favorite, so it would go first favorite, black, second, red, Third, purple. Also, teal is pretty nice. I've always liked teal. Do you want to learn more languages? If so, which language? Well, yes, but actually no. Languages that would be nice to know is like, uh, German. It would be nice to at least actually know that since I took two years of German and, uh, I just came out of it with knowing nothing because I didn't pay attention for two years. Japanese would also be kind of cool, but I don't really care too much. And then if I ever want to move to Switzerland, which is like the country I want to move to, I'm obviously going to need to know that that language prior. So it would be cool to know those languages, but at the same time, I just don't ever feel like learning them. Uh, just trying to get myself to sit down and learn a language is just something I don't want to do. I, I can barely even fucking speak my own. I, I, I try to learn German, Japanese, and Swedish on Duolingo, and then I just stopped using it for like a I used it for like a few days, and then I just stopped using it for a few weeks, and then I just uninstalled it. I just, I don't have the drive to learn a, a, an entire language, but it would be cool to be able to know like a ton of them. That'd be kind of neat. To be able to just switch between like five different languages in a single sentence would be really fucking cool. <laughs> what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? I'm gonna be honest. I haven't seen that movie in a while. <laughs> 
So I guess the only way we're gonna be able to resolve this is not by our knowledge of the Force, but by our skills of a lollipop. <laughs> I can't fucking believe that video has blown the fuck up recently. Holy shit. What does Asuka's hair color in Ava symbolize? It symbolizes the symbols of symbolization. Are you a person that likes to listen to music while you are gaming? If that's the case, what music? Uh, not really. <laughs> I mean, like, I know back in the day I used to just, like, hop on Minecraft and just, like, destroy mountains while listening to, like, fucking Net Nobody or the radio, which, I mean, that was, like, 2016, so I would, I would always hear either Cheap Thrills or that one fucking 21 Pilots song that I can't remember the name of. But, for the most part, I just don't really listen to music while gaming, because I just, it, it just, because, like, I play games like, um, like Arkham. Like, if I play an Arkham game, I can't really listen to music because I like listening to the dialogue of that game, or same thing with, like, Gears of War and shit. Contrary to the fact that I don't like games like Telltale, or I don't like visual novels, uh, I don't hate a story in my game. I do like a story, just as long as it's not the main fucking aspect. Like, if it's a game entirely based on a story where I don't actually get to play the game, I don't get to use the controller, I only get to, like, press one button every five minutes, that shit I don't like playing because I find that shit boring as fuck. But if it's a game like pretty much every other game where there's a story, but for the most part you get to actually have a lot of gameplay and play that game, and just, like, occasionally there's a cutscene, I like that shit, and I like listening to the dialogue if I like the game enough or if I'm going through the game for, like, a first time. Uh, so I don't really listen to music during that because I actually like listening to the dialogue. And also just because I've gotten back into liking... There was a point in time where I didn't like listening to, to the soundtrack of the game. I would mute that shit. But I've gotten back into liking that stuff, so I just don't listen to my own music because it clashes with the music of the game. And sometimes the music of the game is really fucking good. I'll throw on a couple examples of my favorite video game soundtracks and, like, the, you know, songs from them, because I, I just... God, video game soundtracks are so fucking good for no reason. Any game that you want to remaster of. Uh, I don't really give a shit about remasters. I don't really give a shit about visuals. Unless it's like one that came out in 2021, but it looks like it came out in 1978. I don't even think there were video games in 1978, but you get my point. In that case, I think it's fair to not like the visuals in that game, but for the most part, like, I play... I play pretty old games. Relatively pretty old. So I just don't really give a shit about visuals, but if I were to choose a game that I, like, games that I would want remastered, um, easily Oblivion, because that is my favorite game of all time, and I think that game just looks beautiful on its own, even for the 2006 graphics. Shit like the Imperial City looks fucking beautiful and awe-inspiring, and if I got to see that shit in 4K, that, sh that would be fucking remarkable. Also, this is a kind of weird one, but, uh, Honey Pop? The original Honey Pop. Granted, I just recently got on Steam, and I don't, I don't know for sure if there is a like if they've updated it, like updated the quality of that game and 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 Steam. But also, it'd be nice if you know there was like a widescreen remaster or something, or even better yet, I I would love a version of Honey Pop that had the art style of Honey Pop Two. That shit would be fucking dope. Also, I know it goes against the whole, like, remaster aspect of a game, but it would also be kind of cool to have a version of Honey Pop that has a little bit better voice acting. <laughs> Another one I would say is Gears of War 3. The visuals are fine, I'm fine with them, but the creatures are so genuinely terrifying. 
and even in like even in the quality that it is it's still kind of scary to look at and i could just only imagine what that shit would look like in 4k like the fucking shit that crawls on the ground like the head from a beast that crawls on the ground and fucking goes at you at supersonic speed is fucking terrifying that shit in 4k would be fucking dope also uh silent hill 2 I know the Silent Hill franchise already got a remaster, but that remaster was fucking dog shit. And while I've never played Silent Hill 2, I really want to play it. And if there was a remaster of that game like 4K, I think the creatures would look... Maybe? A lot more cooler? I mean, they already look cool anyways, but... I don't know, I think it would be really cool to see a 4K version of those creatures. Um, and if and if you don't know about the already remaster... Um, I think all I have to say in order to explain how terrible that was, they got rid of the fog. And finally, I think I would go for Batman Arkham Origins, just because uh, that game, uh, sometimes when characters speak, it's a little little weird, looks a little, little, little bad. But overall, I think that game would look pretty, like, pretty cool with modern-day graphics. I mean, the the, the pre-rendered cutscenes look fucking fantastic. They look just beautiful, and I would love if the base game looked like that as well. What's your favorite Pokemon? I'm a basic bitch. I like Pikachu. <laughs> I, I, I never really got that much into Pokemon, so genuinely, like, like, Pikachu's my favorite because <laughs> I'm fucking basic as shit. Are you planning on making a cover? Uh, planning on it? Actually, kind of. There there have been songs I've I've wanted to cover, uh, like, Be Someone by Net Nobody, Paralyzed by NF, probably some si Shinedown songs, but doing a, like, lyrical cover of something, I am not, I just, I don't feel confident doing it, especially when you get into, like, rock territory, because that, that, that fucking, <sighs> the fan base of that genre is so just elitist and toxic, and it's, it's fucking absurd, and if I were to step into that genre with the shit and, like, the knowledge that I have and, like, my skill, it would, it would get fucking bombarded with just dog shit. Like, I, I cannot, I cannot light the candle, let alone raise it to, like, any song, just in general, like, any song that I like that has vocals on it. Um, there is one song, though, that I did start working on a cover of, um, a while ago, and I'm gonna, I, I gotta, I gotta go back and, and, um, and look at that shit, because, uh, I, I would like to finish that. That cover is, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the boss theme from this really fucking, like, absurd Nintendo DS game that I'm the only person that's ever known it, and for some reason the soundtrack is so... It's so good for no reason, but the one song that I've heard off that soundtrack that I thought, oh, I could make a cover of, is the, I believe, boss theme. Like I said, I've already started working on that cover a while ago. I just haven't touched it in, in a while, and I gotta go back to that. It'd be kind of cool to, to drop that. If you could change anything in the world, what would you change? Um, okay, I'm gonna get serious here for a second. Um genuinely, if I could change anything in the world, I would change... I would change the way grief is. I, I, I would make it so the grieving process isn't... isn't fucking painful. I, I, I would make that shit so much better to deal with. It, it, it fucking sucks. Step one. <laughs> Do you aspire to be like some artists, or do you want to be your own thing? Yeah, I would like to be my own thing. I would, th I mean, that was the whole, like, the, the whole thing I thought of. Or, that was the mentality I had when I came into making music, was I want to have my own sound. And that was actually inspired by Ronald Jenkins. He's like the one big inspiration I've had when it comes to music. Because his, he, he just, I found his music at a time where I absolutely, fucking lutely hated electronic music because shit like uh alan walker even though i i do kind of have like a soft spot in my heart heart for his classics shit like alan walker or marshmallow i i just and especially marshmallow i fucking hate their music i especially march i think marshmallow is like the one artist i hate the most because it's like every single fucking song they make has the same preset same drum sounds 
same fucking melody, same everything. Like, every one of their songs is so formulaic, and it's the same shit, and it just, it pisses me off so much. And I just hate shit that sounds the same. And Ronald Jenkins came in uh, to the electronic genre just not sounding like anyone else. And none of his songs sound the same. Like, every single Ronald Jenke song is not the same. And Disorganized Fun is, like, one of my favorite albums of all time. I would I, I would highly recommend that. It is a fucking fantastic album. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the last two songs. I like to pretend they're bonus tracks so they don't matter. But, like, everything but those, those, those uh, two rap songs that he has on the end of the album is just fucking remarkable. I love that shit. And... Ronald Jenkins, just the fact that he was so different and every one of his songs sounded different is why I I came into the game the way I did. And I just, I didn't want my songs sounding the same and I wanted to stand out, so that's why my debut EP has a really weird song structure, regardless of quality, which is dog shit. So yeah, Ronald Jenkins is what basically inspired my sound in a way of just wanting to sound different compared to everyone else and wanting to um, have my own sound and not wanting all my songs to sound the same. I wouldn't say that I aspire to be like Ronald Jenkins, but he is, um, he, he is, he is like the one big inspiration, um... City Girl also was what got me into making lo-fi and implementing that, but that's... That's pretty much it. Obviously, there are artists and songs that I listen to that is just like, oh, I kind of like that. So, you know, maybe I'll implement it in a, in a song or uh, something like that. Like, uh, my song Anger's Whore, the whole, like, guitar riff of that was just heavily inspired from um, uh, Affluenza by Three Teeth. So there, there's shit like that. But for the most part, I just, you know, I want to be my own thing. And that's it. I want to be my own thing so much to the point that when I produced my rap EP postgraduate, um, I just, I don't think any of those songs actually sound like, um, generic rap songs. I mean, they just, I don't know, I feel like they have their own, their own personality, their own flair to it, uh, especially, like, Midnight Walks. As much as I don't like that song, I... I do kind of like the fact that I rapped over what was a lo-fi song that I had made. If you got the rights to create something related to a character, movie, series, or game, what would you do? If I got the rights to do something with, like, the Elder Scrolls franchise, I would make Bethesda make Oblivion 2. And make more games like Oblivion. And avoid everything that made Skyrim Skyrim. I, I mean, like, there's some things about Skyrim that's cool, but... Fucking Christ, is it so boring nowadays. I've gotten so bored of that shit. Just, like, I want more games like, like, um, like Oblivion. I fucking love Oblivion. I actually have a video in plan of, um, comparing Oblivion with Skyrim. So, look out for that. I think that's pretty much the only thing I can think of. I don't know, I can't really think of any, anything that... Oh, uh, if I had the rights to, uh, Teen Titans, I would fucking cancel Teen Titans Go! and bring back Teen Titans for a sixth season. And, uh, final question that I have is, uh, any movie character you hated at first but ended up loving? I genuinely cannot think of an answer. <laughs> if you're expecting me to say that fucking the black-haired bitch from a silent voice, no, fuck her, I hated her. Her only good scene she had was when she got smacked the fuck up by the mom. I loved that shit. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, uh... I genuinely can't think of, like, a movie character that I hated at first. To an extent, I guess, like, maybe Kylo. I mean, I fucking hated him in Force Awakens, and I hated him more in Last Jedi. By Rise of Skywalker, I didn't like him, but I did think he, like, deserved better. And I think he was, like, one of the characters that got, like, a little better in that, that dog shit trilogy. <laughs> I used to always hate Robin because of the Lego Batman games, and his AI was absolute fucking dog shit. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, there's really not much that I can, I can, I can find or think of. Uh, if I hated a character, I hated a character. If I liked a character, I liked a character. I, I genuinely cannot think of a single character that I initially hated and have liked now. I just, I watch a movie, I hate a character, and I hate it forever. And also, I just don't really rewatch movies that often, so... I mean, I guess that's also a factor. I don't know, I feel like there has to be, like, a, a character that I hated but ended up loving. Um, there was the lawyer from Richard Jewell, but I, I didn't really start off hating him. I actually, well, 
No, yeah, I, I did kind of start off thinking that maybe he would be like a like the the stereotypical really shit and like pompous cunt boss, and then uh, he he came he became uh, kind of lovable and like almost immediately I thought I would regret liking him and that he would be an evil character or like a, a dog shit person, um, but then he ended up just being a really fucking cool guy and and I, I liked him so I don't know if that counts. A uh, character that made me go through different motions. Uh, by the way, Richard Jewell, the, the Clint Eastwood movie, fucking fantastic. It's it's amazing. Watch it, please. Jesus, it's it's great. There you go. That's the Q&A. Thanks, uh, thanks once again for 300 subscribers. It fucking means a lot. Um, got a shit ton of video. Not really a shit ton, but I got a lot of videos planned um, to be made soon. Uh, and also, most likely when this video comes out, uh, the Batman series will continue being released. So look forward to that. Yeah. All the links to my stuff is in the description below. I don't really end videos that much anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>